Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 81. Hoping you guys are all doing well. Today is Saturday. Was today the 21st of March? We are still in the midst, still in actually in the beginning of this, uh, I guess, voluntary isolation, they call it. Um, I don't know. I'm okay. I, I got mixed feelings about the whole situation. I mean, you know, of course we got no choice and I agree. I think everybody should be doing it. Uh, But the thing is, uh, how bad is it for me? I'm saying right now, we're not sick. Thank God. Hopefully you guys are not sick. Um, Hopefully you don't know anyone who's sick. Um, But uh, trying to make the best out of it. Uh, Getting a lot of writing done, as I mentioned. <clears throat> also, try and knock out a TikTok a day. I know some of you guys have seen it. Tell me what you think. Um, doing something a little different tonight, and there's a reason why I'm doing this. Okay, so I have my recording system actually in my hand. I don't have it before when I came outside. I am outside right now. Uh, before when I was coming out, uh, coming um, outside, I would lay it on my car on the hood of my Jeep. And I would do the whole recording just like if the Jeep is a desk. And it was cool. It worked out. It was comfortable. I kind of leaned. It was comfortable. It was good. I had my water there. Um, I came back out because it's a beautiful, beautiful night. I just, it's cool. Nice little breeze. Hopefully it's not hitting this microphone. We shall see. Um, Another thing that I'm doing differently, and we'll see how this works out, guys. So bear with me. I got Coco. (laughs) I got Coco. I got my dog out here with me. Uh, I have it on the leash. Um, <clears throat> so we just, uh, I figure I'll just bring her outside since I usually let her out at night anyway. Now, what I am noticing on my block, because I'm, I'm in the driveway right now. So what I am noticing is there's like a lot of extra cars. Like, <laughs> like I don't get it. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, it's, it's weird. Because... We're supposed to be in isolation, right? Or at least voluntary. But it seems like this might be, I mean, it's Saturday night. It seems like there might be a party. I don't know, is there a game or a fight going on or something? Uh, not in front of my house, but like down towards the corner a little bit. Um, I know those people, they love to have parties. So I don't know if they don't care. I don't know if they don't think it's, you know, I know they said something about... Uh, those are my Mexican neighbors. They're wonderful people. I know them very well. Um, great people. Beautiful homes. They do a better job with their their yard than I do. <laughs> Much better yard. <laughs> their, their yard makes mine shameful. <laughs> Perfectly trimmed and the whole works. Nice shape to the bush. But anyway, uh, they have a lot of parties. Um, and when they have a lot of, when they have their parties, they have about maybe 15 cars parked in. That's what they have. So I'm just hoping they're having a good old time and they get through this without a problem, you know. But there was a rumor that <laughs> that uh, um, that the coronavirus wasn't going to Mexico, wasn't hitting the Mexicans or oh, in Mexico. So I don't know. They took that as though, well, that's all of us. All of, it's us Mexicans. No, man. <laughs> it's maybe Mexico. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, hopefully they just have a good time and they get through this okay. We definitely don't want no, nobody getting sick. Uh, what else is happening? Hey, guys, it's hard for me to go through these days and, and not talk about what's going on. It really is. Like, f- good night freestyle supposedly be basically what's going on in my day. This is what, how I'm supposed to close the night off. Normally, it's a lot of freestyle. Normally, it's a lot of business, a lot of situations. You know, artists call me. There's a problem. 
A promoter's calling me. Promoter's trying to trying to buy a show. Somebody's trying to bump me. Uh, shows are getting canceled. People are trying to negotiate me. Uh, you know, like my life is about that. <laughs> you know. So when I came up with doing the Good Night Freestyle podcast, I said, well. You know, the reason being is because I went to bed with so much shit on my mind. And it was mostly work. And then it was work. And even if it wasn't work, work, it was regarding the genre. And a lot of times it was like, you know, what's happening with the state? Like sometimes I would see people do some really dumb shit, you know? They would do some really dumb shit. And sometimes I had to vent, man. I had to talk about it. I wouldn't throw names out there because what's the point? I'm not trying to diss nobody, you know? I don't, you know, I'll throw out a name if I have to, but, you know, uh, but it's not even about that because sometimes it's not even one person. It's it's pretty general, you know? Um, So I could talk about that, you know? There'll be situations where, you know, we got a promoter who, uh, and this has happened actually right before this whole nonsense went down, where promoter contacted me um, for one of the acts <clears throat> and I gave him the price and then he went and he went to another agent and that agent gave him a price but then also told me and told the other agent whoever comes to me with the better price so what the promoter did was basically create his own little price war. And I tell them not to do this because if only one agent is calling the, the, the artist for a show, it's negotiable. We can work and we can kind of work the deal out for the promoter and also keep it respectable for the artist. So that way what we don't want, we don't want to bring a price so, so low for a promoter that the artist feels like they've been dissed. That we don't want. We don't want to do that. So, you know, we want to make sure that the, you know, we keep the price, you know, comfortable. And as an agent, we know what those prices are. So it's not like we're coming off the top. Oh, I wonder how much they charge. And then you have an artist saying, yeah, I'm $7,500 and they're really only $3,000. Now, the only people who are going to know that is going to be um, the agent. Okay. But if you, you know, and we're able to negotiate that. But now if you go to one, two, three agents, now you're thinking in your mind, Who's going to get the better price? That's who you're going to book from. It's actually opposite. Because, see, the artist don't care. He's not trying to, f- to, to create a long-lasting relationship with the promoter. He will, and he'll make you think that in the beginning of the deal. But once that show is over, man, that's, that artist will be up in your neighborhood doing a show with somebody else. Now, an agent, on the other hand, well, most of them, not all of them, because there are, there are some that have, like, no morals whatsoever. But me, if I'm, if I'm, if you, we are loyal, you know, co-workers, if we are doing this together, and let's say you have a Austin, Texas, okay, and you're booking for me on the regular. Now, if you book for me and I don't hear from you in six months, then no, I'm not going to consult with you. I'm going to book because you're not booking no more. But if you're one of the promoters that book on a regular, because I have those, they book every month. Of course, I'm not going to go into that area, you know, not at least if it's a one off, I might be able to talk to the promoter who called me or maybe it's a private party. I'll do those. Um, If it's a festival, I might do something like that, but I won't do another club. I won't overlap that market because I want my promoters to be successful, you know? Uh, But the artists don't care. The artist knows that if a promoter contacts them, it's probably going to be once at the very least every six months in six months and then six months. And that's almost like never happens. So you're looking at one show a year per, per promoter. This is what an artist um, should look forward to. Me as an agent, the promoter can call me every single month. So you see the difference? So I can get repeat business with a promoter as an agent, and artists can't. So who's going to look out for the artist? Who's going to look out for the promoter? It's going to be the it's going to be the agent. Again, some agents some agents operate like the the artists, and what they try to do is try to get the road, most money up front, and that's not the way how you do business. First of all, you mess up the ecosystem of the genre. You create you know mistrust. You overprice or underprice the acts. You got to know what you're doing, you know? So I had a situation like that just recently where a promoter contacted me, then contacted another one. Now the artist contacted us and said, whoever comes to us with the most money. 
So now, where the price, the price I got was getting the artist was a fair price. Okay, the other agent charged less. But you see, that show would never happen. That price would never have come to life. So what, what sometimes what the agents do is they'll put a false price out there. Like, so let me throw a, a number out there. Let's say $5,000. Now, if I'm pitching $5,000 for an artist, it's because I know that that artist is not going to go any late, less. Now, if the artist does go less than that, I might say something to the promoter like, listen, this artist normally gets five grand, but there's been times that I've gotten them for 45. Don't, don't hold me to it, but let me, get, let me try my best, okay? So that's how I approach. Now, another agent will come and say, I'll get you that artist for 3,500. Now, what happens is now that promoter, especially if it's a brand new promoter and they don't know me or the agent from a hole in the wall, like we're both strangers. They might know our names, that's it, but they've never done business with us. Now, what they do is they drop everything. They drop me and they like, okay, cool, let's go, let's do it. So what the, what the agent does is he allows that promoter to begin their advertising. It allows them to, he'll, you know, he'll contact the artist, and all he'll do is make sure that the artist is available for that day. Now, he's not telling this artist that he's pitching for, for 3500 He's not saying this. He's just, at, and as agents, a lot of times, the artist knows that we know their price, so they don't even talk about it unless we ask. Like, if we don't book an artist for a while, we might go to them, hey, so so what's up, what should I, what am I pitching? Oh, okay, yeah, so, you know, four is grand, four, 4,000 is good, so. But now, you have um, the artist, you have the promoter thinking that he's getting this artist for 3,500. The agent is giving him the green light because the, 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 the show is available and he's starting his promotions. He's starting to post it on social. Uh, and a lot of times he doesn't, you know, and the agent might say something. OK, cool. You know, you could promote it, but don't tag me. Don't tag the artist yet. You know, because the artist might take a while to sign a contract. That's bullshit. Most of the time you get the artist to sign off like the most a day, 24 hours, you know. So now what happens is now they're pretty much committing themselves because they're going around. They're telling the club owner. They're telling their people, they're telling their family, they're getting people excited, they're getting people on social media say, yeah, yeah, I'm dying to see them. I, I'm dying to see that, that, that artist. I'm dying to see that artist. And the promoter thinks that they're going to get it for 3500 okay? Now, there's a lot of times, even if the agent doesn't know that there's another agent that has been approached, sometimes he might even ask have you reached out to anybody else about this? But even if he doesn't, he'll go back to that promoter. Now, this is the trick here. He'll go back to that promoter after the promoter is basically committed. He'll even go as far as draw up a contract for that price. Okay? And then what happens is the price just gets changed. And, and it doesn't get back to the artist at that point, you know? Then he'll go back to the, to the, to the promoter. And they say, okay, listen, we have a problem. He goes, oh my God, what? <clears throat> well, the artist has another show pending for that date. Can you change the date? Now, the reason why the agent is asking, can you change the date? Is because the agent knows damn well that he cannot change the date. He's just trying to give him the idea that there might be a possibility uh, that they could fix this. But he knows there's not. And even if the, the promoter changes the date, that's still contingent on the availability of the artist. So even though the promoter said, okay, you know what? I can't do May 3rd, but see if they'll be avail available May 12th. All the artist, all the, prom the agent has to do is hang up the phone, go eat lunch, then come back, call the promoter back up and say, hey man, the artist can't do that date. As a matter of fact, he can't do anything in May. 
he could do the end of June or, or July. And that's basically going to be out of the question. Then he'll be like, oh, man, you know, you know, I, I'm thought, I thought I was paying 35 and now it's actually 5000 And he'll be like, well, you know, I was trying to get you to DR35. But yeah, that's the artist's normal price. But remember, you don't have to pay 35 up front. All you have to do is pay the 25. You're going to pay less up front. Then you're going to promote, and yeah, I'm going to help you, and you're going to sell these tickets, and you're going to have the money for the rest. Yeah, man. That's how that shit works. You know, and it happens a lot more than you know. Now, there's only a couple legitimate agents that do freestyle. Just a couple. But the market at this point is so small, and with social media, so many of the artists are going direct that two, three uh, agents is good enough. It's not like hip-hop. There's a lot of agents involved. From the little independent agents to the big, you know, William Morris, CAA, you know, uh, agencies like that. So, but, um, but yeah, man. So, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much, that's, that's how that works. But, But what I was getting at was, those are usually the things that I'm able to talk about. And that was the whole intentions with Good Night Freestyle. But, and I said to myself, I said, like I said, yes, I said, well, I really don't want to talk too much about this coronavirus, but this is my world right now. <laughs> you know, it's not about the virus because I'm, I really try not to, to watch the news, but it's um, more so what's going on in our heads. I think my biggest fear right now um, is my daughter. She's in Germany and she's a nurse. So you're talking about Europe and you're talking about her working in a, in a hospital that most likely are going to start getting, if they haven't already, because I haven't spoken to her, they're going to start getting a lot of those uh, patients coming from Italy and they're, they're, looking, they're looking at Germany to have like a 70% uh, infected infection rate. You know, people to... Uh, to get the virus so that scares me you know what what kind of puts me at, at ease is the fact that she is in the hospital so I'm hoping that they brief her well um, she ha- doesn't have a limit of um, you know protective gear so though she's in a pretty highly infected area maybe um, she's got plenty of gear and face masks and gloves at her disposal so, and I know they know all the rules. So I'm praying that uh, not just her, but all, all these soldiers, man, that, you know, they're out there and they're protecting us. So, you know, it's a scary, that's a scary part of it, you know. Um, I put a post on Facebook <laughs> the other day. It was a, a guy in a hazmat uh, suit standing, <laughs> standing in front of his mailbox. I'm sure you guys see that. I created that, uh, that post. Um, they started talking about this thousand dollar check. I think it's now at like twelve, twelve hundred or something. And uh, I just thought it was crazy, man. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you know, I'm sure for a lot of people, that thousand's gonna come in handy. You know, uh, for me, it's gonna come in handy too. Shoot, thousand dollars is a thousand dollars. You know, but um. Uh, it's just, you know, think about it. Think about <laughs> think about what they're doing. It's just weird. I never in my life would ever have ma- imagined that this would have went down. This is like a damn movie, man. You know, I never looked into the Black Plague, but, you know, I think it was something like this. You know, I need to look into it. But, you know, we think that shit is make-believe because we weren't around during those days. But... Man, and then the tuberculosis, man. Have you guys ever seen the documentaries on tuberculosis? Like families would drop their 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 loved ones off at these hospitals that were basically quarantine hospitals and just leave them there. That was it. There was nothing they can do. I'm like, and then these, you know, back in the days, man, those hospitals back in the days, that's why them damn things are haunted, man. They treated people like like they were evil man oh my god they were evil you know some of these people were being tortured and 
Oh, God, it's sickening, man. If you guys ever get a chance, look, look, find a documentary on the tuberculosis. I believe, I think I brought this up before, I believe, believe there was a hospital in, um, in Staten Island. And uh, supposedly a lot of crazy shit went on in there, you know. So, you know, I have a lot of faith in this country. Oh, supposedly, hey, man, I don't know if this is true, okay? This might not be true, but somebody posted <laughs> that the president, that President Trump said, and he in one of his statements, now, I could be, this could be a total false, so please don't hold me to it. But if you guys have heard it or seen it, please let me know, because this is funny. But he basically said that people... Are, are dying who have never even died before or something like that. <laughs> something like that. I'm like, yo, what's so funny is that it sounds like something he would say. <laughs> it really does. You know, it sounds like something he would say. <sighs> Listen, <sighs> Trump is, is the president of the United States. Um, I won't never diss the president, any presidents. Yeah, there's a lot of ways I don't, I don't agree with, you know. There's a lot, a lot of things I, I don't agree with, but I honestly don't think presidents have that much power. I really don't. I don't study politics. I don't really, but something tells me that. Why? Well, how would they put someone? You know, it's almost like the president of the corporation. Is it the president of a corporation or is it the CEO? Like, and then you got the COO and then you have the CFO. Like, you know, so where does the president stand? Isn't the president just like the representative? Like, isn't the president be like the the, the picture of the Aunt Jemima on the on the on the syrup? You know, with the president is the Charlie Green Giant of the vegetables. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the mascot, like the, the representation, just the face. Because the government is so vast, you know, maybe they need one person to kind of move forward, you know? So, I totally agree. I, this one thing I'll, I'll tell you. They need to stop... They need to stop hiring celebrities and actors and singers and please no rappers, <clears throat> no comedians. I don't want to see Chris Rock president. I don't want to see Jay-Z or Kanye president. I don't want to see Michael Jordan president. I don't want to see these people to be president of the United States. If you did not grow up Wanting to be a politician and working your way in the ranks from whatever, from a freaking mail clerk to um, to whatever, to, you know, to a, a Senate, to a, uh, Congress, to whatever the case may be, mayor, assistant, what, if you, if you didn't, if this wasn't your desire, I don't think... You should ever be president. I think this is where they have to draw the line. I don't care if they're not from this country. Honestly, that doesn't bother me. If they were born, it were, even born, if they were, came here as an infant or as a child, and they worked their way up, and they, they became politicians and so, I don't see a problem with that. I really don't. Others will. I won't argue with them. I'll be like, okay, that's your opinion. I got mine. Whatever. I'm not saying I'm right, you're wrong. It's just my opinion. I just don't think that if, if, if you do not have a passion or you did not have a passion to be a politician, then you should never be a politician. It's kind of embarrassing when you have a president who doesn't know the Star Spangled Banner. And then people say, oh yeah, but you, you got to understand the meaning of it. I don't care what the meaning of it is, whatever. It's a damn song. Okay, <laughs> that we've been we've been singing our whole lives basically. I don't care. You know? But you gotta have at least know the freaking, you know, know know the the Star Spangled Banner, at least know how to draw an American flag, know how many stripes are on. I'm talking about as a politician, as a regular American, ah well if you don't, you don't. I I used to know I, if you ask me some of those questions, I probably don't 
remember any of that stuff. And I'll probably screw up the words of Star Spangled Banner, but I'm not trying to be president. I love my country. Well, it don't mean I have to memorize this song, but if you're going to be president, man, I think it's important that you know at least that and that you understand, you know, what countries, you know, what, what states we have and, you know, you know, what islands we own and we don't own. <laughs> this stuff is important, man. We need to, we need to, they need to know this stuff. So anyway, I just, um, I just want to vent, guys. It was a nice day. My dog did well. I was seeing if she was going to stop barking because she barks at anybody who walks by, but nobody walked by, so we're good. Um, give me a heads up. Let me know how this uh, episode sounded because um, I was outside. It's a little windy, and I'm actually walking around with it in my hands. I don't have it stationary. So let me know if that's affecting the quality. And the reason why I want to know is because, like I said, I want to take this on the road, which I've already done it before. We took we took this setup on the road. Um, but let's say I am walking somewhere or maybe I'm backstage or whatever. I would love to do the podcast like that. I think it'll be interesting. I think you guys will get a kick out of that. So if I can do it. So, but I just want to make sure, you know, last thing you want is bad audio. That sucks. But anyway, all right, guys, listen, I appreciate it. Um, like always, um, this is, uh, what are we, episode 81? You know, this is amazing. It's in- incredible, you know. I appreciate everybody. There's quite a few of you that are, are listening. There's there's at least, I think, 18 people. No, 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 I'm wrong. There's more. I think we're, like, in the 20s just on Anchor alone. Yeah, however, everyone who tells me that they listen is listening from Spotify, so I know personally about a dozen people on Spotify. So I appreciate every single one of you guys. And um, anyway, stay safe. Keep those hands washed. You know, uh, practice safety in your home. Watch the kids. Check on the elderly. And until tomorrow, good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.